Hey everyone, welcome to another Gearbox Dev Update. Before we get into it, I'd just like to say a big thanks to those of you that replied to the previous video on the build at all user interface. Your feedback was really helpful. I think the general consensus was to leave things as they are and focus on the rest of the game, so that's what I'm doing for now. There are certainly still improvements I can make to the build at all, but this is something I can come back to later. Also, I just want to remind you about the Gearblocks Discord. This is a great place to share your creations, provide feedback and so on, so I'd definitely encourage you to join if you haven't already. The link for this is in the description. OK, let's get started. First off, I'd like to demonstrate the physics performance improvements in the latest demo. For this, I'm going to use a creation that one of you guys sent me. Check out this awesome snow groomer. Very, very cool. A track vehicle like this is a great test case for physics performance because it has a large number of rigid bodies and joints. But first, let's load up the previous demo build as a point of comparison. Right, so here we are in the old demo, and we're not even barely hitting 10 frames a second. And if I go in and disable uh, continuous contact detection, which will disable sliding sound effects and so on, it's a little bit faster. Maybe 15, 16, 17 frames a second, something like that. But still, you know, barely playable. Right, let's jump back into the new demo. And here we are back in the new demo. Uh, and this is with um, continuous contact detection uh, enabled again. And you can see we're hitting around the 20 frames a second mark, which is you know, more than twice as good as what we had before. Uh, but a large part of this is due to the upgrade to the latest version of PhysX and the uh, improved and more efficient API for getting collision contact data. But if I go in and turn off continuous collision contacts again, then the frame rate you know, goes up even more, up to around 40 to 50 frames a second. Um, it's slightly slower because I'm capturing the video at the moment, but, but still, yeah, it's much, much more playable than it was before. Uh, and this has a, real, a really big impact for, as I said before, sort of constructions with a large number of rigid bodies, a large number of constraints and stuff, and also a large number of uh, contacts with other rigid bodies or with the ground and so on. By the way, I was thinking, um, in the particular case of having tracked vehicles like this, it might be an idea for me to add specialised parts for the track sections that don't have uh, contact detection enabled, because they tend to generate too much sort of clattering and scraping sounds anyway, and are kind of annoying, and also, you know, lead to much uh, lower performance. So yeah, it might be an idea to, to do that, or either that or add an option for players to be able to go in and disable... Uh, the continuous contact detection um, for, uh, you know, particular parts or rigid bodies or something like that. But anyway, something to think about in the future. On the subject of physics, I've also made some more improvements to the player physics, in particular when the player is seated. Uh, now, previously in this situation, the player character would effectively have no mass uh, and its weight wouldn't affect the uh, construction in which it was seated. But now the, player, uh, the player's rigid body remains active and they are constrained to the seat via a joint. And this means that the, the player character now has an effect on the dynamics of, say, a vehicle that it's driving around in. The other advantage of this is that um, because I'm using a joint now, I could set it up as a uh, spring damper. And you can see the effects of this. As you go around a corner, the player will tilt slightly and, and they'll sort of bump up and down as well as you go over bumps in the terrain and uh, see if I can show you that in yeah in third person view you can see a little bit of the player moving around in the seat and this just adds a bit more life and a bit more dynamics to the, to the player movement the next thing to talk about is the new debug console this is activated with the back quote key it shows the logging output from the game, as you can see here. It also exposes variables to be inspected or modified, and events to be fired. Most of these don't make much sense to mess with, except for debugging or testing purposes, and some may break the game depending on the situation, so it's a use-at-your-own-risk kind of thing. Some are fun to play around with though, so I'll give you a quick tutorial on how to use the console. So, first let's type help. And that gives uh, an overview on how to use the commands and variables and things. You can also type help help, 
And that just shows you that you can type help on its own to get that summary there or supply an argument to get help on a particular command or variable. So if we type list command, that shows the available commands and then we can get help on one of those. It shows you that you can get a list of all the available variables or supply an argument to uh, filter by the beginning of the variable name. So, um, for example, if I just type list var on its own, that'll supply, uh, give you a list of uh, all the available variables. Um, and, oh, and by the way, the up and down arrows will cycle through the most recent commands. But yeah, you can type list var and then say uh, sh, and that'll just uh, give you the variables that begin with sh. So it's a kind of handy way to narrow things down if you're searching for a particular variable. But you can get help on a variable, so say help show FPS will just give a summary of what that variable does. Um, if you type the variable name on its own, it'll uh, show the current value of that variable. And then if you supply an argument, oops, uh, you can modify it. And in this case, you can see it's enabled the FPS counter in the corner there. Let's uh, turn that back off. Um, another useful variable is this one, uh, force hide UI. It's currently disabled, but if we turn it on and then go back into the game, you can see that the UI is now hidden. And that can be useful for uh, taking screenshots and so on. Let's disable that one again. Um, and there are some other variables that are kind of fun to mess around with. So, for example, um, gravity is currently set to 9.81 meters per second, but uh, you can set it to something lower than that, say 2. And now you can do big crazy jumps and stuff, and, you know, um, you can see the vehicle now sort of sits higher on its suspension and, uh, you know, responds differently due to the lower gravity. Um, you know, and it's kind of like driving around on the moon or something like that. Yeah, and obviously you can uh, set the gravity to zero as well if you want, so it has the kind of effect you would expect. But yeah doesn't really serve much purpose but kind of fun to, to mess with. But let's put that back to 9.81. Um, so yeah, another fun variable is, uh, uh, whoops, not that, time scale. It's currently set to 1 but we could, you know, set that to say 2 for example. And now you get a kind of amusing double time thing going on. Or uh, what I quite like to do is uh, let me set it back to one and then get sort of rolling over a jump or something like that. Um, and then, you know, set time scale to like 0.25 or something like that. And you get a kind of cool slow-mo effect doesn't really serve much practical purpose but it's kind of fun to play with and and actually it can help if you're uh, you know struggling with physics performance because the physics has to run at a fixed time step if you lower the time scale um, it can it can mean that it'll do fewer um, physics updates per frame and actually improve performance that way so you know if you're really struggling with frame rate you could lower time scale to like 0.75 or something like that but uh, anyway, yeah, we'll put that back, back to one again. Yeah, so uh, finally, the last thing to talk about is the uh, the new save game format. So the latest demo now uses uh, a new file format for save games and constructions. Um, this change was necessary to give more flexibility for adding new features in the future without breaking old save games. Um, so your old games and constructions from previous demo builds will still load, but they'll be converted over to the new format when saved back out. But anyway, yeah, that's it for this update. Um, don't forget to check out the Discord server and, you know, have fun playing the latest demo. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.